Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and when we last left Hancock, he was having trouble with Native American tribes out west. To put it bluntly, he was not cut out for that kind of military duty, but he would only be in that position for a short while before he was sent to command Texas and Louisiana during Reconstruction. Louisiana, like many of the southern states, were having trouble adjusting to the abolishment of slavery and civil rights being given to African Americans. To make matters worse for them, they were being occupied militarily by Union troops. New Orleans had been a sore spot thus far during Reconstruction, and it had been commanded by Union generals like Benjamin Butler, Nathaniel Banks, and Philip Sheridan. Through a series of presidential orders and discussions between the President and Ulysses S. Grant, Sheridan and Hancock switched places. Sheridan went to command the Department of the Missouri, and Hancock traveled to New Orleans to oversee command of the 5th Military District encapsulated in Louisiana and Texas. This was a huge transition from the radical Republicans supported Sheridan to the Democratic Hancock. When he received the order, he wrote, I am expected to exercise extreme military authority over those people. I shall disappoint them. I have not been educated to overthrow the civil authorities in time of peace. I intend to recognize the fact that the Civil War is at an end, and shall issue my order or proclamation accordingly. I tell you this, because I may lose my commission, and I shall do so willingly, rather than retain it at the sacrifice of a lifelong principle. Hancock was not going to go along with radical reconstruction agendas, and this placed him in complete opposition to many of the people he was sent to oversee and members of Congress. He was thrust into the middle of the conflict between Andrew Johnson and the radical Republicans. Grant met with Hancock in Washington, D.C. before the latter moved on to New Orleans. After the interview, Grant was suspicious of Hancock and the actions he may take as commander of that district. Grant was right to be weary of Winfield's actions because they did not fit with how the commanding general wanted Reconstruction to proceed. Hancock had been instilled from his youth by his father that local and state governments should exercise their power freely with little to no intrusion by the federal government. It was this mindset that Hancock took with him into Louisiana and Texas, which put him on a collision course with Republicans in the state and in Congress. When he arrived in the Crescent City, he wasted no time in issuing General Orders No. 40 on November 29, 1867, his first day on the job, where he stated that where local civil authorities were ready and able to perform their duties, that the army would not interfere with those local governments, but that insurrection would be suppressed with a force of arms. This order caused a lot of concern all over the country and allowed white Democrats in Louisiana to breathe a sigh of relief. Republicans knew that without military might, then African Americans would fail to achieve any semblance of civil rights if the local governments had their way. But they also knew that they would be politically ruined without backup from the military, as they had in the past. In response to Hancock's order, some congressmen put forward a bill that would reduce the number of major generals by one, eliminating the junior officer, which was Hancock, but nothing came of the bill. Another action Hancock took was revoking an order put in place by Sheridan, which encouraged freedmen to be jurors and disqualified whites who formerly supported the Confederacy. Hancock argued that since so few African Americans could read or write, choosing them as jurors brought courts to a standstill. This also followed along with his mindset that the military had no right to interfere with civil matters if the civil authorities were prepared to take on those tasks. Without the military enforcing civil rights, local governments banned African Americans from being seated as jurors. A common occurrence in the Reconstruction South was the presence of soldiers at the polls to make sure no harassment or violence was perpetrated on any voter for their political beliefs. Hancock would recall all soldiers from standing guard at the polls, believing that the military had no right to interfere with elections. However, the lack of military led to voter suppression with violence and intimidation used as common tactics against political enemies. In early 1868, Hancock revoked another one of Sheridan's orders, the one preventing ex-Confederates from voting. Sheridan's proclamation had given a lot of political power to the newly freed African Americans, but Hancock's actions would inevitably change that. In February, another controversy would occur. In the election of 1866, Arthur Gastonell had won election as recorder of the second district of New Orleans. However, his defeated opponent took the winner to court because Gastonell was not of the legal age required to hold that position. By February 1868, he had attained that legal age, 
but the board and assistant board of aldermen met to elect a recorder. Hancock desired the people's choice to be installed and for no election to take place. The aldermen ignored Hancock's order and called for an election anyway. Winfield appointed Gastonel into the vacancy and removed nine aldermen. Seven of the nine were black and represented the entire black membership of the board. No African Americans were among the new members that Hancock appointed. Enough public outrage prompted Grant to order Hancock to reinstate the officials. Winfield performed his duty, then sent a letter the same day asking to be relieved of command of that district. On March 16th, he was granted his wish. Hancock returned to Washington from New Orleans and was named commander of the Division of the Atlantic. However, he would become estranged from Grant in light of Winfield's removal from command in Louisiana.